welcome to or welcome back to the Wilding Astro Tarot YouTube channel. My name is Jade Rewilding and it's a pleasure to have you here on my channel today for our pick a card general tarot reading. Um, today we're asking for channeled messages regarding what you need to know about your current connection or connections right now. Um, and I'll explain the reading in a little more detail in a minute. Um, including what you can expect from today's reading and how to get the most out of it. Um, but for now, as always, I hope you enjoy the vibes as we put together our ritual space. Um, obviously, you're welcome to skip ahead if you want to get straight to your messages today. But if you'd like to stay and chill with me, it's definitely something I love sharing with y'all. It's so pretty, TBH. Um, for any returning wildings, I know it's been a minute since I posted here. Um, the first week I took off because I started my bleed right on my usual recording day. So I gave myself the week off to like really honor myself. Um, definitely resting is something that is important to me um, in that part of my cycle. Um, and then the second week I took off, I was actually out of town. So I had none of my recording equipment to make a video for y'all. Um, but... <laughs> I'm back to regularly scheduled programming now and I'm ex very excited <laughs> for the next few videos I'm recording for you guys. I've got a few tarot videos and a few astrology videos lined up that I think are going to be a lot of fun. But it looks like we're just about finished setting up <laughs> the ritual space today so that's all we have time for today in terms of updates. Um, but let's get into today's video. Okay, so in our video today, we're going to ask the tarot for messages regarding what you need to know about your current connection or connections right now. Um, this reading will have three main parts. We'll start with the basic energies that are activated in the connection right now using this astrology deck. After that, we'll get more detailed messages about what's going on for you guys using the tarot. And we'll see if there are higher meanings that come through in this part. Finally, we'll use some of our oracles um, to let us know if there's anything important you need to be prepared for or what to expect moving forward. If at any point the messages start to resonate, I would love if you could hit the like button and leave me a comment if you have the capacity to do so. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you enjoy your reading today and would like to stick around for more intuitive tarot readings like this, um, we, where we use my background in education, psychology, sexology, yoga and mindfulness to read deeply into the tarot, um, then I would love if you could subscribe. Um, this tarot video today is sponsored by my online tarot course, Unlocking the Wisdom of the Tarot, which launches at the end of the year. So if today's video inspires you to learn more about the tarot, um, you can sign up to the course for the early bird discount price of 50% off. Um, this discount will expire at the end of September, which is only one month away. It's crazy how fast this is coming around. Um, and just know that all the proceeds are literally going straight to my bills, <laughs> feeding myself um, so that I can continue to make content for YouTube um, and finish off uploading all the videos onto Teachable um, and all the captions and things like that to prepare for the course launch date. If you want to know more about the course, I'll link the official announcement video below. Um, but if you make it to the end of your reading, I'll also be inserting clips there for more info. Um, and so with all of those basics out of the way, let's move on to my tips for getting the most out of your reading here today. So for today's reading, you're going to choose either part one, two or three. Um, and then use the timestamps below to head to your reading. If you're drawn that if you're drawn to more than one pile, your reading might be a mix of readings. So start with the pile that you're most drawn to, and then you're welcome to come back and select another after if you feel like there's still more for you. Um, if you're not immediately drawn to a pile, um, I will leave a little freeze frame of the piles um, in a moment where you can pause the video, um, close your eyes, take some deep breaths, then open your eyes and see if you're drawn to one of the piles after that little moment to yourself, that little reset. 
If you're still not drawn to a pile, this video might not have a reading for you today, which is fine. Um, sometimes that happens <laughs> um, with general tarot readings. Um, but I promise that if you subscribe to my channel, I will do another video like this again in the future so you can try again another time. Um, today's reading is a general reading and I will be offering multiple interpretations of some of the cards if I feel like there's more than one dominant energy coming through. Um, it's important therefore that you bring your intuition along to your reading so you can get um, your messages, you can take what resonates and leave what doesn't. That's definitely one of the gifts of general tarot readings right now. Um, it really asks you to dial into your own intuition and know what to take and what to leave um, because everyone's situation will always vary a little bit from the patterns that are kind of playing out energetically in a lot of people's lives. Um, and if at any point in the reading you start to feel called to get a more personal and specific private reading with me, I'll leave the links to do so below. Um, just as an FYI, I offer three kinds of readings. The first is a single question tarot reading where I can clarify something that might be on your mind, something that might come up during the reading. Um, for this reading type, all you need to do is head to the link, make a $50 AED payment with your question and email attached as a note. Um, this is the fastest and most basic kind of reading I offer. Um, and this one's tarot only. So if you just want to ask the tarot something super quick, something super easy, um, we'll do a little reading for you that way. Secondly, I offer combined astro tarot readings that are much, much, much more detailed. It includes a written astrology reading as well as a video tarot, in, uh, yeah, video tarot reading <laughs> for this reading type. Um, you need to head to the link, fill out the request form, um, and this basically allows you to build whatever kind of reading you would like from the ground up. Um, so you can customize your reading in so many ways using this option, and from there we can arrange a reading and an invoice over email. So everything will be done over email from there. Finally, <laughs> I offer astrology only readings. These are also very, very detailed. Um, it comes with a written astrology reading and an interpretation video. Um, and this reading also has a build your own <laughs> reading request form, um, similar to the combined Astro Tarot reading. Um, and it is also arranged over email from there. To celebrate the pre-sale launch of my online tarot course, Unlocking the Wisdom of the Tarot, these two last readings, the two detailed readings, are currently 50% off but I will be ending the 50% off pre-sale. I will be ending the 50% off discount for both my pre-sale for the online tarot course and also those two detailed readings at the end of September. So right now you can get the online tarot course, astro tarot readings, and also astrology readings for 50% off, but this discount ends at the end of September um, when the pre-sale discount ends. So yeah. That's kind of cool and exciting. I've definitely been able to read for a few more people, which I love um, that it's yeah made my readings a little bit more accessible and I've been able to, yeah, read for more people. I love that. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you get called to do that at any point in today's readings, know that that's there for you and it's a really good time um, for to get a reading. Um, but now that all of the instructions, disclaimers and plugs are out of the way, it's time to choose your pile, either pile one, two or three, and wherever you end up, I'll see you there in a moment. Hey there, pile one, welcome to your reading. If you chose this beautiful pink agate crystal, then this reading is probably for you. Um, but we're going to start with getting some messages using this astrology deck about um, the energies that are currently active in your current connection or connections that are going to be relevant to the rest of the reading. So can you please have an overview of the energies that are active for pile one, please? What energies are currently activated in Pile One's connection?
I want there's likely a soulmate energy getting activated for you or coming into you right now or that's recently arrived with this Jupiter return energy especially if you're um, looking for more of a masculine or husband energy um, to settle down with Jupiter returns often bring in soulmate energies of that kind um, and we also have this Libra energy which rules um, like long-term committed relationships we also have 12th house energy so this could indicate a connection from a past life that's re-entering um, potentially you might have been friends in a past life um, but yeah this person's coming in and it's going to shake some stuff up in your life it's probably going they're probably going to um encourage this kind of change within yourself in a very positive direction but it, it may get a little bit dark <laughs> um in the foreseeable future because there's going to be some things that are reorienting in your life um when mercury comes out this is about switching up how everything's practically working in our lives and making sure that it's really aligned with um yeah what our soul wants what um kind of serves us most in terms of the day-to-day -day. um and it's, it also can shift things when it comes to thinking and communication so potentially you're going to see relationships in a new light um you're potentially going to either receive deeper or better communication or you're going to grow as a communicator yourself and you're about to enter into a much more um abundant state relationally um but yeah it's just likely that it's not all going to be sunshine and rainbows getting there it's going to be potentially like there's this is like dreams come true energy but it's also going to shift you into alignment with your own dreams so it seems like there's this very like dreamy energy of like what you want this energy is coming in um and the two of you are going to put a bit of pressure on each other <clears throat> to align with what each of your kind of soulmate dream is it's just going to be a bit of a squeeze it seems um which is fine we love that um yeah, relationships are never easy, they're never challenge free, and it seems like the particular challenges that are coming your way are definitely alignment based. Um, so yeah, love that for you. But we'll get some more details about exactly what's going on for you guys right now and any higher meanings or more details about what this little squeeze is going to be in order to make your hopes and dreams come true what's happening to make pile one's hopes and dreams coming true what's happening in this connection please Can you give us some more details please So I'm sensing a soulmate energy has recently come in and potentially done you a little bit dirty. Um, there's something that they've done that they haven't realized was wrong yet, but they will. <laughs> this Knight of Swords energy, when it comes out, it often refers to um, potentially getting lost in idealism, not realizing that you're wrong, 
um, in some way and like needing to kind of come back down to reality and be a little bit more objective about what happened rather than coming at the situation from your ego. And then this Wheel of Fortune, this is about karma turning in your favor um, and things kind of naturally occurring to kind of right the energy. Um, so there's going to potentially be some like synchronicities and serendipities and just like energetic forces working in your favor to make this soulmate energy realize that they messed up. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's going to turn very positive positively in your favor um it seems like there's in this connection what you need to know right now is that it's kind of in a very early building stage there's still a lot of hard work that needs to be done um, to create a really solid foundation in this connection um, rather than just relying on the like unspoken connection like there's this unspoken feeling of yeah that maybe you belong together in some way or like yeah there's this real draw to this person but the cards are asking you to like remember <laughs> that there's some practical things some practical work building trust building connection building like more of that energy that the 3d self needs um so even if your consciousness is like very aware of like the higher energies in this connection know that your physical body needs to go through the motions of like yeah building all that trust building all that commitment building that um like loyalty and camaraderie and like building that friendship almost as well um so we have the page of pentacles this is a it's an energy that su suggests that things are going to manifest you just need to um persist essentially like really stay in your vibes and stay high vibing um so that all of your um success can find you um the seven of pentacles is an interesting energy um it's a saturn in taurus energy um and it's really about figuring out what's not working and then kind of fixing it towards whatever your goal is um so yeah if there's any idealism on either part you guys need to realize where you're being too idealistic where you've got kind of unrealistic expectations maybe take it back to square one a little bit um and yeah put in the hard work and the effort to like build a beautiful connection with each other um and make sure both people are pulling their weight equally um it seems that <laughs> It's important that the two of you pull your weight equally with all of this like double Libra energy, energy, double balance energy. Like, yeah, you want the, you want both people to be contributing equally. And that's really important. Um, at the same time, the seven of pentacles can appreciate, can be like, appreciate all the hard work that's you've already done. Like there's, even if it feels like there's still a lot of work to do in this connection, like really practicing gratitude for like how you've been able to get to where you are now, like the work that needs to be done actually in comparison to all the work that you have been doing in order to get where you are now, um, yeah, is <laughs> like not actually going to be that hard in comparison to what you've been through. Like you've been through it, you've done a lot of work, Yes, there's still effort to be put into this connection, but like you are more than capable. Um, and yeah, like essentially you're ready, you're ready to go. Um, yeah, I'm sensing some of y'all are tired, but <laughs> such is life. Sometimes life is a hot, bit of a hot mess, a bit of a train wreck. We just gotta get through it one day at a time. You just keep doing you, keep doing your best. Um, we have the strength card in reverse so this energy is um a very leo-ish energy and it's really about um taming the inner animal and this is a lot about ego and just being clarified by this justice card potentially both of you there's something there's something that either your inner child or inner animal is like afraid of or fearful of or like not willing to give up power in this situation in some way 
Um, so yeah, there's maybe a need to practice this kind of self-kindness, self-love with yourself. Um, you can see in the artwork that this is the subconscious that's very connected to the higher self, the more feminine energy within the soul. Um, and it's like really tenderly loving the inner animal. It's like understanding like all the pain that animal's been through, why it reacts the way it does. And like kind of allowing those reactions to be there and like going through the full range of emotion of whatever those reactions are. And then um, when the inner child or inner animals felt really seen and heard, then moving forward consciously as a team, like the kind of higher self and the like 3D self, like working together to move forward. Um, once that like inner animal, or inner child has felt seen and heard. So yeah, there's potentially this opportunity to like go within, figure out like what's coming up for you, why it's coming up for you, um, and for your person to do the same. Um, and then when you've like poured to yourself, when you've like seen and heard yourself essentially, then bringing that to your partner to be seen and heard by them. Um, it seems really important that you see and hear yourself first before you expect someone else to see and hear you. And likewise for your person, um, if they're coming at you without and like looking for something from you that they have not first given to themselves, like, yeah, just treat that as a bit of a red flag and just like make sure the two of you are prioritizing the self first. Um, and you can do that through setting the example for sure. Um, but yeah, like also you can see in this artwork, the justice has surrendered, surrendered her sword. Like she's not fighting. Like this is very much an energy of like, don't fight things, like allow things to play out the way they're meant to play out. Um, and yeah. yeah there's going to be some stuff triggered but that's okay um finally you have the ten of wands and five of cups so the five of cups can indicate feeling like we've lost everything um so if there's been some sort of loss or distance in this connection right now um the five of cups often refers to um needing to experience the full grief or pain of whatever that loss entails, like really allowing yourself to um, feel your feelings um, and making sure you're not holding on to those feelings, you're not blocking the energy within, not blocking the prana um, from flowing. But after you've felt all your feelings and like listen to the pain of your inner child or inner um, animal, then also being able to appreciate what remains. Um, so in the Rider Waite artwork, the Five of Cups is drawn as um, someone who's looking at three cups that have spilled over and they've got their back to two cups that are still totally full and still totally upright. Um, and the message of the card is that sometimes it feels like you've lost everything, but really there's there's still something there. Um, so yeah, like concentrate on what you still have and practice gratitude for all the love and connection that you still have. Um, and this can also be like, if it's, if you're struggling to, um, practice that gratitude of what is still there, um, you can also find others who will help you, who are compassionate, who are loving, um, who want to be there for you to remind you as well. Um, cause the cards also traditionally drawn with like a bridge over troubled water towards like this, like little community, like remembering not to isolate yourself and to, um, connect with people who make you feel loved, um, which is very much this cups energy. It's all about like love, connection, relationship, um, being there for each other, things like that. So yeah, if this is a bit of a tense time right now, like relying on the people around you because yeah, they want to be there for you. Um, we also have the um, Ten of Wands and this card is a Saturn in Sagittarius energy and this can be about um, being burned by old patterns because Saturn is very karmic um, 
And because Sagittarius is a very, um, it's, it's kind of like the first, uh, uh, yeah, I would say it's the first energy of the tarot where you're like really coming into your, I mean, of the Zodiac, where you're really coming into your spiritual power, um, where your faith is so strong, where um, you're even able to learn how to heal yourself because it has a lot to do with like experiencing the world, bettering yourself. Um, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is a very abundant energy. It's all about expansion. Like, yeah, so there's this energy here about like healing old wounds, um, being really determined um, and knowing that the work you're doing right now is really important. Um, and it's like of a very kind of high spiritual order. So yeah, like approaching this energy of like almost like dealing with your emotions with a lot of integrity um, and knowing that it's it's important to give yourself that time um, and to yeah, figure out if there's um, any kind of old energies burning you that um, essentially you'd like to leave behind, that you'd like to grow from or in yeah it's definitely potential for you to like be moving forward right now with your own personal development which I love that for you um but we're going to find out if there is anything else important for what you need to be prepared for um or what to expect next moving forward we get some messages about what pile one needs to be prepared for and what to expect moving forward, please. Forget. Okay, so if something's gone down, which we kind of think there has been in this connection, um, yeah, this person hasn't realized that they've, um, done you wrong but also done themselves wrong and for the time being they're definitely going to be um kind of going over it in their head a lot replaying things we've got the camera <laughs> cassettes so this is a lot of like reflecting on kind of the situation between the two of you learning from it um especially learning from the past realizing kind of where they were acting from outdated thinking but yeah, they're going to be going over and over and over this in their head. So even if you guys aren't in, um, if you guys aren't speaking right now or whatever it may be, just like know they're like going to be real hung up on it for a while. They know there's something important to do with this connection for them. Um, so yeah, they're going to be, they are definitely going to be thinking about it. Um, yeah, I think with these cards like let them figure out kind of how they did you dirty and like maybe how they weren't showing up with integrity um and you just worry about like taking care of yourself essentially um and just trusting the process with what they've got to go through and what they're doing um because yeah you kind of can't force it and the energies are naturally going to turn in your favor so kind of let things play out it seems and you just worry about loving yourself up and putting in that effort with yourself um like you need your own love right now and that's what's most important okay so got assessing yeah so what have we just been saying self-love like really prioritize self-love right now that's what's most important. Okay, we had a fair few things come out. Okay, so it seems like what's important for them is they've got to, like, really think things through. You've got to, like, avoid overthinking, I would say, and just, like, focus on self-love. Um, don't let the fear take over. Um, don't get stuck in the void of the darkness. Um, no, this is not personal. This is probably more about um, just each of you having stuff that's kind of clashing right now. Um, so really focus on giving yourself love, healing. Blue butterflies are um, indicative of healing. Um, so yeah, focus on 
kind of giving yourself that love, giving yourself that healing. Just like stay within your own energy. Like don't get too distracted by this other person's energy. Um, and definitely like listen to your inner child and your inner animal with this real compassion and just like not accepting whatever those parts of you are feeling is kind of the whole truth, but just like the truth of your emotion. Hopefully that makes sense. A lot of water in here. So I, I'm just sensing there's going to be a lot of emotion coming up for you and that's fine. Um, but yeah, don't get lost in it. Like maintain your, um, ability to like feel your feelings but then also to like witness it and just like keep coming back to yourself keep coming back to that self-love that healing um and yeah don't get carried away by the darkness don't get lost in the darkness um yeah it seems like it's a bit of a tricky situation now but it's actually facilitating the creation of like all of your hopes and dreams coming to coming true sorry um so yeah, it's kind of like the dark part of the creation. It's like creating the void so that something really beautiful can be built. Is there anything else you want to tell us about what pile one needs to be prepared for and what to expect? Okay, so we've got it's time to take, take action. Is there anything? that they need to take action for maybe. Okay, so the action that you need to take, it seems a little bit more um, personalized, like worry about releasing negativity from your life. Like if this, if spending a lot of time thinking about this person right now is too much negativity, like potentially it's a good time to like release that um, and maybe adjust how you're approaching the situation. Um, Mm, yeah, it seems like, yeah, there's adjustments required on your end. I don't think this is action towards this person necessarily. I think this is taking action towards yourself um, and caring for yourself and making sure that um, you're not inviting in any negativity. You're kind of like keeping your energy like clear. I'm getting... Do we have any affirmations for pile one to finish off, please? Okay, I allow myself to let go and let the universe to guide me. Okay, so there's been a lot of letting go messages so I think right now this soulmate connection needs to be kind of let go of um, and just kind of surrendering to the universe definitely don't force it um, and definitely just like prioritize you right now that's what seems important for you to know <coughs> um, but I think I'm gonna leave the reading here today um, I hope you got something out of it. Thank you so much for making it all the way through. Um, if you enjoyed today's reading, I would love if you could give this um, video a like and a comment if you have the capacity to do so. Um, and if you'd like to get more intuitive tarot readings like this from me, then the subscribe button is there for you as well. Um, if you'd like to know about all my offerings there's plenty of links in the description box below and i've also inserted the announcement video for my online tarot course at the end of every reading today so you can learn more about that by sticking around right now um, but in any case it's been a pleasure reading for you today and until we see each other again ciao
Hey there, pal two. Welcome to your reading <laughs> for um, what you need to know about your current connection right now. <clears throat> We're going to start off using this astrology deck to get um, information about what energies are active for you guys right now in this connection. We get the energies that are active for pile two in their current connection. What energy is active for pile two, please? So it's super likely that you guys are dealing with themes of like more universal or godlike love right now, as well as soul contracts and potentially very fast changes occurring in your connection. Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius and Aquarius is the, the ruler of the 11th house. So this is a lot of 11th house energy here, which deals with hopes and dreams coming true, as well as like networks, friendships, um, and like a sense of community. Um, it also deals with universal love, like loving everyone almost on a soul level, the way God loves all it, all their children. <clears throat> um, so it seems like there's definitely some sort of like expansion happening here, but it's happening in a way that there seems to be a bit of maybe fast and drastic upheaval. Uranus tends to make things happen quickly and lunar eclipses tend to be more of a breakdown energy to initiate change. So potentially some things are falling apart in order for all of your hopes and dreams to come together. Um, this Taurus energy, this can be about shifts that are happening in what you value and also communication because Taurus rules the throat chakra. Um, and the Taurus Scorpio axis is really about um, balancing this energy of like um, a uh, getting to know someone um, through communication, through um, expressing your own inner world as best possible, and then receiving the same thing from your partner to help you understand each other. Whereas the Scorpio end of the Taurus Scorpio axis is more about an unspoken connection between two people. So seems like your connection might be um, at a point where you guys are needing to rely a little bit less on the un unspoken nature of your connection and rely a little bit more about um, kind of putting in the effort to communicate and get to know each other um, a little better um, and yeah to like really understand each other especially like what you value what makes you feel safe and secure um, because Taurus energies definitely prioritizes emotional security, whereas Scorpio, um, tends to prioritize sexual ecstasy. So yeah, it seems like there's some sort of pull for more kind of security and stability in this connection right now, um, and a bit more communication, um, potentially also a little bit more balance given that the Libra energy came out. Um, we have a lot of threes, which is a creative period, like things, potentially breaking down in order to create something new or better or different. Um, let's have 9944. So nines can indicate the ends of certain cycles and fours can indicate that kind of security and stability, which is very much this Taurus energy. So yeah, potentially some sort of change has occurred and you're reaching the end of that cycle and you're heading into a new cycle where everything's going to be a bit more secure and stable but we'll get more specifics from the tarot deck about <clears throat> what's going on for you guys as well as any higher meanings that you need to know about Oh, 
Oh, that's a lot popping out. Can we clarify the devil card? And the hermit card, please. So it seems like you all are coming into your High Priestess and Empress era. The High Priestess is like very devout to her spiritual work and the Empress is just like really in the flow of life and embracing all of life's many pleasures. She's very like Venetian and she just like loves life, creating, enjoying, abundance. Um, the High Priestess is really also in the flow of life. She's got a crown made of the... Um, moon cycles so she's really in the flow of the um what is it the infradian rhythm of the feminine energy that definitely is very reflective in nature itself um given that we go through this monthly cycle of the moon um in real <laughs> real life um so you guys are potentially entering this real intense flow um and just like kind of peak of a more divine feminine energy um and yeah, it seems like what's coming for you is definitely a lot of abundance. Um, however, it seems like kind of what's going, the change that's currently happening or has just been happening um, was really about you becoming more conscious of your um, bondage. The devil card is known as the consciousness of bondage in terms of the path to enlightenment. And it's really about finding ways that you've been restricted by usually outside forces or things that you've internalized from the world around you um, that aren't necessarily true or at the very least aren't true for you. Uh, it was clarified by the Eight of Pentacles in the in reverse and this is like a real kind of like diligent doing the work energy because it's a sun in Virgo um, and it's much more about kind of like hard work, order um, and kind of being a bit more methodical but I would say this coming out in reverse is maybe telling you that that's maybe not the vibe for you that potentially like you want to be more in this like more creative and flow energy and that's potentially what's going to light you up um in terms of your soul work um because Uranus Aquarius and the 11th house all together can refer to where you fit in the tapestry of life and how you're supposed to contribute to the lives of people around you the 11th house especially whatever sign is ruling that for you can tell you like who you're supposed to help um, and potentially that's kind of where you're coming into right now so it seems like you're going through this real personal evolution that's having this kind of backfire effect on your connection with someone um, or potentially drawing a new person in that's going to be part of this like experience of abundance um, a little ways down the track. Um, so we've got the Ten of Swords and the Hermit in reverse. The Ten of Swords, this is, I know it looks menacing because there's so many swords stabbing this girl, but this is really about a death to kind of the old self or the death to, death to the self that's like very caught up in like identity, potentially false beliefs, and just like more of the mental stuff in life. And it's really about, um, like honoring the spiritual self first um, and maybe not getting so tied down or carried away with um, like all of the labels essentially life puts on us. Um, and yeah, like recognizing that soul nature, the air element that is associated with the swords card deals with both mental processes, but it's also the closest element to ether or spirit. Um, so the sword suit is really like <laughs> this weird combination of like there's this like very mental self that sometimes can be associated with the ego um, and there's also this very um like higher spirit self that is all kind of contained in the one suit and this is kind of why the sword suit is considered a difficult suit because um you've got these two energies that a lot of the time, especially when we're young, are competing against each other. It takes a lot of time to figure out how to make these two energies work together. Um, 
And yeah, so it seems like potentially that's the area you're entering in now where you're really getting the um, more mental self to work for your higher self rather than those two, two parts of yourself being at odds with each other. Um, and this hermit energy, it's interesting because both these energies are Virgo-ish energies and they're in reverse. What's interesting about Virgo is it's probably one of the more misunderstood um, zodiac signs because it's ruled by Mercury, which seems very kind of like logical, practical. Sometimes it's interpreted as like analytical and critical, but Mercury is um, also the planet that goes in retrograde the most out of <laughs> all the planets. Um, so technically anything that's Mercury ruled spends equal amount of time in that energy, but also in the opposite energy when it's retrograding. Um, so Virgo is the kind of maiden goddess um, that's like whole onto herself. Um, and so she's the duality of kind of the masculine, feminine, light, shadow, like all of those kind of dualities that exist in life is contained within Virgo. And kind of similarly, a lot of dualities are contained within Gemini, which is also Mercury ruled. So um, whenever you have Virgo or Gemini energies come out, it's usually, it's almost an energy that sometimes feels like it contradicts itself because it's two energies in one, essentially, or two sides of the same coin. Um, so I'd say these two energies coming out in reverse, these two Virgo energies coming out in reverse, it's talking about the more... Um, Mercury retrograde version of Virgo and she's more this Empress energy she's in the flow of life um, she's like more intuitive and more of that earthy energy um, and less of that maybe air energy that a lot of people typically associate with Virgo um, she's a lot more complex <laughs> than what people realize and potentially that's what you're unlocking right now it's like un an unlocking of some duality within and potentially your current connection is trying to reflect back to you some of this duality of the self um, to teach you some of these things to shift you more into this um, kind of flow feminine um, like reversed Virgo energy rather than um, the more direct Virgo more analytical more um, doing the more practical stuff energy it's like shifting you into this direction um so yeah if this connection is feeling challenging for you um know that this is why it's like kind of creating this shift for you um so that you can embody more of that divine feminine um but we'll get some messages from the oracles about um, if there's anything important that you need to be prepared for and what to expect moving forward with all of this. Do we have any messages about what pile two can expect moving forward, please? Um, so your current connection might be more of a karmic nature um, and it's really to get you to take off this maybe more masculine energy mask that you've been wearing to really allow you to um, experience more of your divine feminine power, more of this empress and high priestess upright energy. It wants you to be kind of your true self in that capacity and really honor your energy um, but this is going to take some time. We've got the clock. And so there's going to be some healing, some healing like the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine within um, in order to shift your energies in a way that's going to honor yourself more. Like you're essentially coming more into yourself now than you ever have been. Um, and in this connection, you're going to feel like you're able to let go of a lot of um, the pressures that are put on you to kind of show up a certain way um parts of yourself that you felt you need to hide um parts of yourself that you know you felt you needed to kind of perform or pretend any ways that you've um gaslit yourself to thinking that 
who you really are isn't enough in any capacity like this is really what's um this connection is, is teaching you it's teaching you so much about yourself and shifting you into like your power essentially I would say is what's happening here <clears throat> yeah have faith in this process it's all part of the path for you reaching your destiny it may not make sense, but eventually you'll be able to look back and be like, I understand why everything had to happen the way that it happened. Um, potentially, you're in this like process of realizing your true self and like focusing on you so that you can experience a new beginning, potentially with a divine masculine partner that's coming in by the looks of things. Um, so yeah, potentially the current connection is like more of a stepping stone to a forever person coming in, um, after this energy shifts. It's a lot of cards that chose to reveal themselves. Okay, so if there's anything that's still confusing, the answers that you need are coming. Um, but yeah, it's important that you spend time now shedding this mask um, and I'm sensing that this don't let this pride get in the way might have to do with accepting that the current connection is potentially more of a karmic connection and not a forever connection that's not to say that you won't be with this person for a long time potentially it's just to say that yeah like don't let the ego get in there too much and like try and force it to be a forever thing um yeah it, at some point this connection is most likely going to end once it's done what it needs to do but yeah this is really about coming home to yourself so cancer's rules the fourth house of the home but it's also like your very um spiritual more private life so yeah all these shifts that are happening are bringing you home to you um so that you don't need to pretend or force or fake anything anymore like you can be your true self um and stand in your power so that's the intention of what's happening um and yeah there's gonna definitely be a death to the old self and a um and moving forward in a much more authentic way um and yeah i'd say this is going to challenge you <laughs> maybe um yeah some stuff will come up to do with this shift but it's very positive um in terms of where it's taking you um and know that it's taking you to kind of like all your dreams coming true this 11th house energy is all about wish fulfillment um so it seems like where you are now is this real stepping stone to having all of your dreams come true um, which I love that for you. Um, but we'll get a final affirmation to finish on. Oops. Okay, so we have, I trust the divine guidance and my inner wisdom, all the answers exist within. So we've had a double energy in terms of answers coming so if there's a question you have about your current connection it seems like it is going to resolve itself like there's going to be some sort of realization some sort of aha moment that's coming in very very soon um just stay open to whatever that kind of little inner wisdom is going to be um because it's potentially going to really help um in order to yeah, kind of align you with what's meant for you. Um, but I think I'm going to leave your reading here for today. Um, if you made it all the way through, thank you so much. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you did, I would love it if you could like the video, leave me a comment. And if you have the capacity to do so, um, yeah, let me know what you thought. Um, and yeah, um, if you'd like to get more intuitive tarot readings, 
like this from me on this channel the subscribe button is there for you and if you'd like to know more about all my offerings including my online tarot course and the personal and private readings that I offer um, there's plenty of info in the links in the description box below um, and I've also inserted the announcement post for my online tarot course at the end of every reading today so if you'd like to stick around you can learn more about that right now but it's been a pleasure reading for you today and until we see each other again ciao Hey, part three, welcome to your reading today. If you chose this beautiful blue eye light crystal, then this reading is probably for you. But as always, bringing along your own intuition and discernment. And um, we're going to start by finding out what are the general energies that are active for you in this connection right now using our astrology deck to start off with. We please have the kind of themes or energies active for pile three's connection. So we potentially have a no contact situation happening for you guys right now with the void of course of moon. This refers to a period where the moon's not making any aspects to any other placements. And because the moon is associated with the soul, when this card comes out in this kind of context, it's referring to um, potentially souls not making contact with each other for a period of time. Um, it seems like the purpose of this no contact though is to create some potentially very sudden changes that are going to move the two of you into alignment with your um, true personal life purpose but also the purpose of this connection. It seems like there needs to be some sort of separation in order to align um, with the intent of this connection, like what it's supposed to bring the two of you. Um, potentially this might be a past life connection, giving the 12th house um, came out that houses our past lives um, for some people this might also be um, an energy of this connection potentially triggering you a lot and you're potentially noticing a lot of your 
personal conditioning and coping mechanisms coming up right now um, but that seems to be an important part of the process um, we have the water element coming out so this is all about um, sensing intuition psychic abilities also a lot of like love and connection like there's wherever there's water there's often relationship and um, a lot of emotion ranging from like intense grief to intense happiness like literally the whole spectrum um, is potentially coming up um, and then we also have Taurus and this is really about um, Taurus does what Taurus got to do like Taurus is very um, Taurus knows what makes it feel makes it feel safe secure um, kind of knows who it is um, and Taurus is all about kind of doing the work whatever work that may be it's often to do with soul work especially and just kind of like moving towards the goal um, in a way that really honors the self like what does the self value especially but also um what's the truth of the soul in question so the two of you are potentially both moving towards your life purpose in a way that honors each of your values and each of your truths um but yeah we'll get some more specifics about what's happening here using our tarot deck we have specifics about what's happening here please we have specifics So true love has come in or is coming in with the page of cups and knight of cups. This is like the kind of love that's like totally pure, um, very romantic, very passionate. Um, it may be with a person who's maybe a little bit more of a difficult energy, but they are very mature and it does seem like they do have the capacity to come correct um, and show up for you the way that you need um, someone to show up for you it's just important that this connection goes through a kind of pause um, probably now um, with the moon coming out in reverse the moon card often refers to like kind of reorganizing ourselves especially through sleep sleep so we consolidate like all of our memories all of our learning um, and it's also where we receive a lot of wisdom from the divine um, and where we have the potential to go um, visit like spiritual realms um, to evolve the way that we're um, experiencing the situation um, in the 3D so yeah it seems like taking a break is important it's part of each of your spiritual growth with the hermit card coming out this is like really about focusing on your own spiritual self your own spiritual self-study and like kind of devoting yourself to god more than devoting yourself to another person and it seems like this person could definitely make you get a bit carried away just based on how much love there is here um so yeah there needs to be this pause and this pause is really going to cause um kind of a death to the old self the self that was very attached to um like beliefs identities and like all of that kind of like swords mental <laughs> energy um this ten of swords this is a sun in gemini and it's about starting over with a whole new bar paradigm and really what it is because it's the ten it's the culmination of the swords energy and the swords energy encompasses both the kind of like mental more cognitive um very three-dimensional self and also the higher self because air element has a lot to do 
or it's the closest element to ether or spirit. So often this indicates like the new paradigm being better alignment between the conscious mind and the higher self um, and the two working together <laughs> rather than being at odds with each other. Um, and this is where we feel really spiritually fulfilled. And um, we have the Nine of Cups coming out, which is like deep satisfaction, deep abundance. So Jupiter and Pisces energy. Jupiter is a very like expansive energy. Jupiter is very, I mean, Jupiter is very expansive. Pisces is very spiritual. Um, and essentially it refers to kind of evolving in a way where you can feel deep gratitude and contentment for everything as it exists already like there's going to be kind of more of a mental shift that's going to make you more um abundant and satisfied with life without the physical circumstances necessarily changing there's going to be some kind of more internal more spiritual shift that's going to um yeah like come in potentially very quickly um yeah, pay attention to your dreams in your sleep because whatever it's telling you is going to be important. Um, and it also seems that it's important that you fight for this connection too because there's some sort of like higher force, God energy potentially that's on the side of this connection. The Seven of Wands is about taking on um, a lot of opponents, but knowing that you have God on your side and as long as you're not entering into those um as long as you're not entering into the fight from a place of ego um given that it's a Leo Leo-ish card um as long as you're um entering into it with this like honoring energy like honoring the, the will of God essentially and fighting for something because um it's in the it's in the best interests of your higher self and um yeah, then that's what the Seven of Wands is about. It's about fighting for something because it's the will of God, not because it's the will of the ego. <laughs> um, and it does seem like this connection is part of the will of God. It seems important. Um, so, yeah, know that this separation is important in terms of this connection doing what it's supposed to do. Um, but we might get some more messages about what you can expect from this connection. What can Pile 3 expect of this connection, please? Okay, potentially... Um, during the death of this connection, during the separation period that you're um, going through, it's really about the growth and transformation in your personal life. Um, know that um, if other connections come into your life or your person's life, that these connections are going to be there for a reason. They're going to deliver important lessons um, and teach each of you how to kind of let go of each other and love each other more fully like love each other without kind of attachment or ownership um yeah just like loving each other in a different way um without ownership is probably better than the better explanation i would say um yeah i wouldn't worry too much if there's a bit of like <sighs> dating life for each of you between um the connection ending and the connection reuniting um and if something comes up for you like just have fun with it it's probably going to be part of the lessons um and be detached like know that it's potentially not going to last forever but it's going to teach you a lot of stuff and if not teach you a lot of stuff just bring a little bit more fun and spice into your life while you're um, creating this big shift um, but yeah it's important since the hermit card came out that the priority is always your relationship to God over your relationship to any people that might enter into this during this separation phase is there anything else
So it's important that you have kind of faith in this connection reuniting, um, but that you really just like focus on you, focus on you coming into your power. Um, know that this connection will get a chance for a new beginning um, after you've learned to potentially nourish yourself a bit better. Um, and maybe also just like following a path for you that feels more nourishing in general, like really aligning with your soul purpose. Um, yeah. Have faith and stay in your power. Seems to be the important messages. Is there anything else they need to know? Okay, so we have a time to give rather than take. Show the world the real you. Yeah, we've kind of spoken a bit about you coming into a more authentic version of yourself. Um, so a personal issue reaches resolution this is a full moon in cancer energy and cancer rules the fourth house of the home and the spiritual life so this can really be about coming home to yourself and um, personal issues resolving because you're prioritizing your personal kind of spiritual self um, so yeah know that there'll be some resolution of issues that you might be facing in connections with people as you come home to yourself as you um, focus on your spiritual relationship and your relationship with God more than anything else um, and this is this energy is really yeah there's going to be like a lot of coming home to yourself and moving forward life is going to feel a lot easier um, based on this authenticity and based on this connection to you the divine um this is not a time to be selfish we've got the new moon in virgo so if at any point things get difficult um filling yourself back up by loving others around you this can be people just in your day-to-day -day life given that virgo rules the sixth house which has a lot to do with um, the people that we encounter every day. Um, and this is also the house of pets and health. So really giving yourself a lot of um, love when it comes to your own like wellness, as well as like potentially if you'd like getting a pet um, so that you have someone to receive unconditional love from and can give unconditional love to. Um, it's potentially a good idea for you guys. Um, but yeah. What else do we have? Do we have any final affirmations for pile three, please? So we have my motivation is fueled by the thrill that my goals will bring. I am ready to create my dreams. So yeah, like focus on your path, your life purpose. Um, and yeah, focus on creating the dream life that you really want more so than focusing on this connection right now. It's an important that this connection takes a little breather. So yeah, you do you right now. That's the important takeaway. Um, but I think I'm going to leave this here. I hope you got um, something out of this reading if you made it all the way through. If you did, I would love it if you could like this video and leave me a comment if you have the capacity to do so. Um, and if you'd like to get more intuitive tarot readings like this from me, um, the subscribe button is there for you as well. Um, and if you would like to know more about all my offerings, including my private readings and my online tarot course, the links are all in the description box below. I'll also insert a clip from my um, online tarot course announcement video um, at the end of this reading as well. Um, so you can hear about that now if you'd like to stick around. Um, but it has been a pleasure reading for you um, until we see each other again. Ciao.